So, ladies and gentlemen, it says the sine of pi equals 3 pi over 4, right? And what we want to do to answer this question is we need to kind of think about what exactly are they asking. So let's, before we can actually go through, let me have my microphone turned on. Um, actually, I did. So before we can even go through what they're asking, let's think about what have, what have we already learned before when they were, that we knew exactly what they were asking. So let's go back to when we were given an angle and we said sine of 30 degrees equal. Now, does anybody remember what they're asking here? Marco, do you know what we're asking when I was asking for this question? What are they asking us to find? Right, the sine of 30 degrees. And typically, though, Thomas, what did that represent, the sine of 30 degrees? What did that represent? Think about the unit circle. What did that sine of 30 degrees represent? Do you remember, Thomas? Huh? Oh, OK. All right. Yes, Nico? I'm making this up. I'm kind of going back. What are we asking for this? Yes, Olivia? Right, exactly. If you guys remember, when we were talking about the sine of 30 degrees, to evaluate that, to, do, to evaluate the sine of 30 degrees, we wanted to figure out what was the y coordinate on that unit circle of, for the angle of 30 degrees, right? Because what we did, this is 4.2, if you guys remember. 4.2, the first thing I told you guys to do was to draw the angle 30 degrees. So here's your initial, or here's your initial side, here's your terminal side, right? So you drew an angle like that. Then remember, we needed to determine where does that angle intercept on our unit circle, right? And what we did was we looked at that and we said, this triangle now has some certain, has, um, some certain, certain qualities. When it's a 30 degree triangle, do you guys remember, I went through the whole process of 30 degree triangle. What is the radius on the unit circle? At this point, what is the radius for this triangle? Unit circle always has a radius of 1. So therefore, by doing the mathematics, I said this point is square root of 3 over 2, and this point is 1 half. Meaning the x and y coordinate for a point on the unit circle at 30 degrees was equal to square root of 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. Does everybody follow me? That's what we previously did in 4.2. So when I asked you find the sine, we need to think. Remember, sine represented your opposite over your hypotenuse. But since my hypotenuse was one, was one, we just looked at the one half, which ended up being the what coordinate of the coordinate point? The y coordinate, right? So when I say sine of 30 degrees, what I'm trying to do is really evaluate what is the y coordinate of that of the coordinate point where sine of 30 is on the unit circle, right? So you'd say that's equal to one half, Mr. McLogan, right? Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to have you write something down because this has become very important. If you look at this, what am I asking for now? Am I asking for what the point on the unit circle is for this angle, for this problem? No. What am I asking for this? What is the unknown? Here, the unknown was that coordinate point. What is the unknown when I say sine of theta equals 3 fourths? What is the unknown? Yes, Chelsea? Yeah, the theta. And what does theta represent? A what? So theta represents the degree of an angle. Exactly. All right? So ladies and gentlemen, when we're trying to figure this out, I'm trying to figure out the angle. I don't know what the angle is. The only thing I know is sine, which is 3 over 4. Now, by looking at, if you guys remember a unit circle, whenever we evaluated for the sine of, sine of an angle, was 3 fourths ever an option? No, the only options, the only points you guys had was sine could have been 1 half, it could have been 0, it could have been um, 1, it could have been square root of 3 over 2, or it could have been square root of 2 over 2, right? When we were talking about those common points on the unit circle, um, those are the only points that we thought for why. So here's what I want you guys to write down. Whenever you encounter an angle or a problem that is, or a, I'm sorry, whenever you encounter a point that is not on the unit circle, write this down, I'm telling you, Asterisk this thing, just go like this. Whenever you come to a problem that has a point not on the unit circle, create or draw a triangle. So let's draw a triangle. So we have three fourths. How do you draw a triangle for three fourths? The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write down 
Besides, if you don't have, if you have a point that's not on the unit circle, draw a triangle. First thing. The next thing is, if you don't know your six trigonometric functions by now, we need to go home and get some flashcards and memorize them because you guys have to know how the six trigonometric functions relate to one another and how they relate on a um, on a right triangle. So, ladies and gentlemen, if I say this is my angle theta, how do you write three fourths in sine? Remember, sine is opposite over adjacent. So for this angle, the opposite side would be 3, opposite over hypotenuse. I'm even losing it. So therefore, 4 is a hypotenuse. How do I know this is not on the unit circle? Well, what is my hypotenuse on the unit circle? 1. What is this hypotenuse? 4. So you can say, so you know that these are not going to be the same. So how do you figure out what this length is? What do you do? Pythagorean theorem. Okay? So now, once you do Pythagorean theorem, you have 4 squared equals a squared plus 3 squared. 16 equals a squared plus 9. Subtract 9. 7 equals a squared. Square root. a equals the square root of 7. Okay? So now you guys have, now you have a triangle with all three sides. So can you, pit, can you find out what sine, cosine, tangent are? Can you? Yes. You just need to figure them all out. Okay? You just need to figure out sine, cosine, tangent. Um, and then you go back through and do the reciprocal properties, the cosecant, the secant, and the cotangent. But now you have your triangle, just do your ratios with your triangles. Does that make sense? All right, so I'm going to keep on saying it to you guys until you remember this.